name's Greg Crab. I am the founder of a small consultancy called 108. 108. Uh, the name tracks back to my law enforcement career for 25 years. I was a U.S. federal law enforcement officer with an organization called the U.S. Postal Inspection Service. And in that role, I had the opportunity to chase the origins of Eastern European organized cybercrime, which was quite exciting. Uh, but uh, in 2014, there was a pivotal moment where I was leading an investigation into a nation state attack against the U.S. Post Office. And that was the moment that I transitioned uh, from, as I joke, from being the, the hunter to being the hunted. I, I became the uh, chief information security officer for the U.S. Postal Service, which is a huge organization, uh, 650,000 employees, 31,000 retail locations across the U.S. Uh, I was responsible for 1.2 million uh uh, computers and uh, uh, nearly 80 million identities uh, in our in, uh, identity repository. It was a huge responsibility. And um, and three years ago, I had the opportunity to, uh, to draw my pension. And now I help a wide variety of organizations in their cybersecurity journey. And I'm really passionate about helping organizations to really drive AI into their uh, into their business systems, and uh, really, how do we make this AI transformation that organizations need to make, and how do we do it securely, ethically, uh, and kind of aligned with the business interests of the organization? So that's really where my passion has come to be. I help a lot of different organizations in financial services, defense, startups. Uh, it's really been quite exciting. So uh, the U.S. Postal Service is a massive organization. And uh, one of the most important benefits that we saw in uh optimizing the efficiency of the organization was really around machine learning. And uh, the Postal Service, many may not know this, was one of the first to apply machine learning to read addresses on envelopes. And so in order to really speed up mail processing, we were able to apply that OCR technology in order to be able to route mail in a much more efficient way. We reduced literally um, hundreds of millions, probably billions of dollars worth of cost out of our network by applying machine learning to those uh, business processes. And uh, as all organizations have, have, have grown, uh, you know, the implementation of technology for 31,000 retail locations where you're processing $10 billion worth of credit card transactions and, you know, all of the uh, systems necessary in order to be able to apply those kinds of um, technologies is, is extremely important. Uh, as a law enforcement officer, uh, I had the good occasion to spend uh, a good portion of my career in San Francisco. Uh, area. And this startup company in the late 90s, um, very innovative at its time, uh, we were receiving massive amounts of mail fraud complaints. Uh, when victims uh, receive, don't receive the goods they've ordered, or don't get paid for the goods that they've sold, um, that's called mail fraud in the United States. And uh, I had the occasion of being able to respond to that uh, company and support that company. That little company was eBay. And uh, I had a little nameplate at eBay uh, in their trust and safety organization. And it really uh, gave me a firsthand view on how this was late, late 90s, early 2000s how cybercrime was coming to be integrated with e-commerce. And I think some of those uh, early experiences really defined how I view the world of technology, 
uh, where we're going with AI and I think uh, what we need to do in the future in order to be really able to, to build what I call the transactional security environment for organizations, um, kind of get on my soapbox for a minute. I believe that um, organization, you know, as Peter Drucker, one of the you know legendary thinkers behind business, said, "All a business is is innovation and marketing." And when you think about AI, you really need to base yourself in how are we going to grow our business using these technologies? How is it going to support our business operations? Just like the Postal Service used machine learning uh, decades ago to optimize their ability to route uh, mail and packages, AI is uh, really where early, early days in helping organizations to optimize their operations in order to gain uh, that innovative advantage for, uh, for their market. I, my passion is cyber turnaround uh, situations where you've got a troubled project or a troubled program where the whole cybersecurity program is broke, uh, following a, a cyber a significant emotional event. Um, and as a former law enforcement officer, I love going into that chaotic situation. However, uh, the first thing you need to do is stabilize, right? You need to be able to give the leadership team and the board the confidence that you can reestablish trust in the organization, that the systems are secure, that we can patch what's wrong and then get back to operations. And so uh, I've had the good occasion to be able to do some of those responses uh, and then transition into really how do you create the program that really helps the organization go forward into the future? And you know, more and more we're seeing where, uh, you know, AI is as important to the future of the organization as any other use of technology that exists, right? And so how do you get the right people, um, just like a cyber incident is a all of business problem set that ha you have to respond, uh, remediate, and manage consequences, AI governance is, is very much the same way where you've got to define what you need to achieve from a innovation perspective. Are you trying to innovate from the core or are you trying to go for a moonshot innovation? And a lot of security professionals are left out of some of those conversations. And so I, I, believe it's extremely important to understand, are you helping the, are you going to be applying AI to be able to uh, improve your customer relations management? You know, are, are we going to do, for example, fraud detection and prevention with AI in order to be able to support the onboarding of uh, customers in a more robust way? Or are we going to completely change the business that we're in and redefine how uh, our sector operates? That's completely different uses of AI. And if that security professional, if those security compliance and risk professionals are not on board with where the the leadership team and the board want to go with that AI transformation in their organizations, you know, you're lost. And, um, and I think uh, I've seen organizations really uh, get frustrated, particularly um, I, I was just reading an article this weekend about how Gartner uh, says, hey, the honeymoon is over for AI. You know, generative AI has been here for two years. Uh, CIOs are really pushed to the limit. And 
uh, we need to really understand how uh, these technologies are impacting business. And it can't be left to the CIO to figure out how to drive AI into the organization. It really needs to be a whole of business. And those product officers, those, um, uh, those business leaders need to really come together. And, you know, is it the role of the CIO to do that? Is it the role of the security professionals, security compliance and risk professionals to do that? Or do we need to all come together to be able to really make an effective governance for, um, for how organi the organization needs to go forward to address some of these uh, challenges that, uh, that really um, change the way you do business with AI? Uh, from, from a... I think there's three really important considerations from a security perspective. Your organization be, is being currently attacked using AI. Your systems, um, you, you know, your your AI systems are targeted uh, from a uh, attack perspective, and you know, in the design and implementation of your AI systems, there can be security failures. And you know those kind of three buckets really uh, are those concerns that the security professional needs to be at the table in order to be able to help argue that hey we need to to fight the attacks uh, that we're at, uh, having where AI is being used against us with AI. We need to use AI to. Uh, really make sure that the systems that we put in place from an AI perspective are secure. And then we need to build these AI systems in a way that they aren't going to fail. And, um, you know, there's some really good frameworks that are being developed in this area and uh, making sure that those frameworks are applied, applied properly are extremely important. Uh, you know, the, uh, OWASP has their large language model top 10 that you should be concerned about making sure that uh, your data is not attacked, your models are sec you know, properly secured, uh, that uh, you know, prompt injection is, is not uh, a problem. And then you've got you know, that core Kubernetes infrastructure where you're uh, your AI is is operating. You've got to make sure that you know proper role based access is implemented there. That you know the 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 network that that uh, uh, you know that that um, that software defined network that you know is part of that uh, that infrastructure is properly uh, secured from a, a rules management perspective. So so many different aspects that the security professional really needs to come in and provide uh, uh, kind of guidance on on how to properly uh, uh, guide the organization into their AI journey. Absolutely. And it's in it's in that customer space, right? Uh, fraud detection and prevention is critical for organizations. As a law enforcement officer, I saw firsthand how an organization can completely be, uh, a business can go out of business because of these types of attacks against uh, their uh, authentication mechanisms and uh, their new customer registration processes. And so... Uh, AI is the is the best place, I think, to really improve that customer journey on enrollment and account management. And so, uh, fintech uh, example, a recent fintech example, we really sat down and walked through that entire customer journey, that whole enrollment process, and we saw where the as I had mentioned, the AI attacks are being made against the organization and understanding how do we stop those attacks from occurring? And then how do we implement 
uh, AI on the backside to make sure that new enrollments are have integrity, right? And and then once we've got that new customer enrolled, see so much we see uh, the the c- customers being uh, fished with the smishing attacks and um, you know trying to get the the username and password as well as uh, convincing the, the the victim financial holder that they need to uh, to share their six digit code from their SMS and uh, you know those types of attacks uh, are becoming more and more prevalent as well as uh, being on the backside of the systems and recognizing when those attacks are being made against um, against the organization. There are some uh, fraud detection and prevention capabilities that really can be implemented on that backside with AI that can s- stop those attacks from occurring. So uh, I think the role of the security practitioner is extremely important in expanding what I call the transactional security environment for every organization that has con- a consumer facing um, uh, set of uh, authentication and, and enrollment processes. So uh, I think a couple of the the challenges that we're seeing are really around uh, learning, uh, machine learning, and understanding those patterns that represent good activity and bad activity, and how the actors are really um, kicking it up by doing their own modeling against your systems. And so that's a significant um, risk. I think the supply chain risk is important here as well. Um, so many of customer enrollment systems have so many different components and making sure that they're orchestrated in a way that um, is secure for that whole view of the customer life cycle is extremely important. Um, and um, you know, I, I just think of data data poisoning, the data poisoning risk and synthetic identities as a real challenge that organizations are trying to overcome. Um, so those are some of the risk management issues that I'm seeing. Uh, uh, but you know that that's very specific to that kind of customer enrollment process. Other risk man- management challenges. Uh, I see a lot of bias in AI systems. That's an extremely important risk to consider because we don't want uh, these systems to, uh, especially in the context of financial services, to really have a negative impact from a bias perspective on enrolling in uh, financial services, for example. got to measure, right? It's all about, I I think, um, understanding where you're having success, but also recognizing that you've got to measure each part of uh, that process from that Lean Six Sigma sort of mindset, getting in and looking at those fishbone diagrams and understanding, okay, this is where each process is. This is the results that we're getting. And how do we optimize them by looking at all of the different components? Is this third-party vendor um, performing at the rate that it should in order to be able to um, do the know your customer process, for example, for the financial institution? That's an important you know, gate and recognizing each of those gates across the way are, are critical to um, optimizing the use of um, AI in these uh, customer journey uh, processes.
I think AI costs uh, are going to lead to more strategic partnerships and open innovation where we come together as a community, uh, where resources are shared so that uh, you know, organizations can scale the way they need to scale. Um, they can get uh, efficient uh, implementation of some of these AI governance frameworks that I'm talking about so that not everyone is implementing the, uh, the wheel in their own way. And I think uh, by partnering, uh, I think that's where competitive advantages can be um, achieved and those costs can be uh, properly managed. As a security practitioner, my excitement comes in admittedly understanding the adversary. And I think we need to be eyes wide open in recognizing that adversaries are developing these technologies at a very uh, fast pace. And we need to be concerned about deep fakes, misinformation, uh, advanced persistent threats that um, organizations really need to uh, understand, adopt AI measures in order to be defensive. Um, so for me, um, uh, I, I, I guess I have a, uh, uh, a brutal view of, of excitement, but, you know, those are the things that keep me up at night that help, you know, bring me to the table to help clients, um, kind of create this culture of, uh, vigilance and innovation. And I think that's where we as practitioners really need to be looking, uh, on the security side and recognize that that's what we should be excited about. I encourage uh, any anyone that's in the need of cybersecurity services, uh, really looking to drive AI into that customer journey or uh, protect their organization from AI attacks. Uh, reach out on social media, find me on LinkedIn and at my website, uh, 108cyber.com.